Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga, and I live on the west coast of Norway, where I work as a doctor, and I spend a lot of my free time knitting and making. This is my little corner on the internet where I talk about all things knitting, and uh, today also a tiny bit of spinning at the end, tiny bit of crochet, but mostly knitting. And um, it's snowing outside. It's the first of May in two days and it's snowing. Yay! All the plants that I planted are probably not going to survive. Re repeating last year's um, too soon optimism when it came to the weather. It's been really weird. We had 20 plus and then now it's minus four. What's up? Anyway, this is not a weather channel, this is a knitting channel. So uh, grab yourself something to get cozy and I will talk you through some finished objects and um, some whips. I am wearing knitting. You can't really see it because it's a bralette and uh, I'm wearing it underneath uh, a shirt. It's the Simple Bralette by Naked Knit. It's a very uh, delicate bralette. It's knit in cashmere, a light fingering weight to lace weight cashmere. I use the um, combat compatible cashmere from Knitting for Olive. And it's see-through, so I'm not gonna show you the nipples. Sorry, uh, <laughs> you're not here for that anyways. It's uh, very comfortable to wear. It has zero support, so if you need support, it's not for you. But you could wear it on top of something else, I guess, but that would kind of defeat its purpose of being a bralette. Uh, but I really like it to, to have as like a comfortable layering piece when I don't need the support. Um, and I enjoy it. I wear it a lot underneath when I go to work, when I have those 26 hour shifts, because if it's quiet at night, you can try and sleep, but you might have to jump up at any moment. Um, so I always just sleep in my scrubs. It's not the best quality of sleep, but having comfortable bralettes underneath helps. And it also helps me keep warm when it's really cold. So I like it. Mm. And maybe I'll show you a finished object that you've seen before as a whip because I also have someone that has been cast on and cast off since the last episode. So, this one. This is the Rowena sweater by Fable Knitwear. It is a negative ease sweater, vintage inspired with puff sleeves. I knit the medium size for my grandmother. So if you watched the stash video, you know that one of my grandmothers passed away. Now I have one grandparent left and it's the one who taught me to knit and she wanted a sweater, she wanted a blue sweater. I went through my stash and I saw what I had in blue. And this is what I had in my stash. This I think is a Jameson and Smith cone, which online looked more of a minty green and in real life it's more of a blue. And I also had four balls of this color from Isayer. So this is the Isayer silk mohair. Uh, I was a bit worried knitting the sweater that four wasn't gonna be enough, but as you can see, I have not half a ball left, but I have a bit left. And I don't know, maybe I have 200, 250 grams. I haven't weighed it yet. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be making an adult sweater with this color again. Maybe some baby knits or children's knits for gifts perhaps, uh, or some accessories. But four was enough. 
I knit the medium size and I elongated the body by eight or nine centimeters, which is quite a bit because it looked very cropped. And I'm really glad I did because it's still cropped. I also elongated the sleeves. Um, medium should be a good size for for my body with the measurements, but I find it to be too tight. If I were to make this for me in this yarn combo, I would do the large next time and I did get gauge. So I think there might be um, the properties of the wool mohair that I used in this is more sticking to each other than the one intended in the pattern, maybe. Um, or it might just be that I'm not used to wearing negative ease knits. I'm more for the oversized, at least I have been in the past four years. Um, I just really hope my grandmother likes it. I hope she doesn't feel like me that it's a bit too tight. I'm hoping that maybe she's a little bit slimmer than me and it's gonna be perfect. Um, the I'll show you the video. I, I recorded a little snippet of me wearing it with this bralette underneath, so it's just the the sweater, there's no bulk or anything, and it, it feels quite tight, especially on the arms, but I do think I have bigger arms than her, so I'm hoping that the little puffs um, are going to look nicer on her than they do on me. Uh, I hope to visit her next, not, not, not next week, in two weeks time. Uh, I have some few days off, so I'm going to be driving down, it's like seven hours from here by car, but I, I'm... I'm going to do it. I'm going to go down there and I'm going to give her the sweater and hope that it fits and hope that she likes it and hope that it's not too itchy. I didn't find it itchy, but I mean, I can feel, I can feel that it's there, if you know what I mean. So if it's too scratchy for her, hopefully it's not so tight so she feels like she can wear a turtleneck or something underneath, like a tight fitting turtleneck. There's a lot of tight going on with this. Um, but yes, so made the sleeves longer, made the body longer, and it's still short. It feels quite tight, even though it's supposed to be the right size for my measurements. I also did the neckline a bit shorter because I tried it on and I felt like it was long enough. Um, I don't think she wants a turtleneck to go all the way up. She likes the kind of mid neck look. So I think it's, I think it's gonna be perfect. Um, I did soak this twice just to really try and get it to soften up uh, i didn't felt i just when i wash things i will take warm water from usually from the shower and i have a big like tub and i fill it with the warmest water with some kind of soak or eucalyptus soap that you don't have to rinse out and then i gently just put it into the water and just push it under and leave it until the water is room temper temperature so for several hours, like I can do it in the morning and then when I come home from work, I will lift it carefully out as a ball, try and squeeze it out, put it in a towel, roll it up, step on it to squeeze out the water, and then I lay it flat to dry. Now I did not aggressively block this in any way that I put it on a mat with pins and drag it out. I didn't do that. I just laid it flat to dry. So... Um, because, you know, it's supposed to be negative so it's supposed to be like this, and then you put it on and it stretches out. So I didn't want to overly block it, and then it would be, look weird. I don't know. If it was to be for me, I would try and block the sleeves, which are knit in stockinette. I would probably try and block it a bit bigger, because that was the most constricting part on my body, I felt. So, I don't know. Th those are my thoughts, um, but yes. Rowena jumper finished with a bit of yarn left to go, so that's good. And yes, hopefully. I'm gonna make sure that I remember to, to take it with me to visit her. So I might just put it in a bag already, ready to go, and then put this away. So don't forget it. We'll see. Hopefully, I will remember all the things I need to remember. Okay. 
Okay. I um had there was a there was a baby shower last week for a friend of mine who I've known for several years. We uh, were in residency together. We now currently work together in the hospital and she's having a baby and the, the other female doctors in the ward that I'm working with decided to throw a little surprise baby shower for her because she hadn't had one. And uh, we ordered tapas, we uh, surprised her. She thought we were just hanging out, which we've never done before out of work because someone's always working. Um, but we, yeah, we all met and we had great tapas and we all had like a little gift for her. And I really wanted to make her something. She also knows how to knit, but she doesn't knit a lot. So she just hasn't gotten around to making something for the baby yet, she said. So I made her a little something. And also one of the other um, senior doctors, she's also a knitter. And she made her like um, a sleeping suit or a car suit, she called it. It looked very similar to the, the Selma's sleeping suit from Petite Knit but it wasn't that one. It's something that she's been making for years. So it's been a thing for a longer time. And it was so cute. I had some summer yarn in my stash that I was gifted from a viewer. It was some scraps that she had left over from a project and she wanted to send it to me so that I could try it. It's some Portuguese yarn and I have a little bit of scraps left over. It's the Rosarius for Felizia eco-friendly collection. So that is the label. And this is the color 11. And it's 50% cotton and 50% bamboo uh, viscose. And these came in 100 grams, but she had used them for a project already. So these are some scraps that she sent me. Very cute colors. And then there was two full balls in these two colors. Uh, so I have made uh, some patterns with 50% bamboo and 50% cotton before. That was the Viking Garn Bambino, and it's my favorite spring summer yarn, I think. I just really like knitting with it. It doesn't feel dry and hard, which cotton often can do. It feels really like, um, almost like uh, moist. That's a weird word. It's, not, it, it's the opposite of a dry feeling. Uh, it feels really nice to knit with and it makes a beautiful fabric. This feels like the Bambino, so if you can't get the Viking Garden Bambino, maybe you can get this Portuguese yarn. I do hope to um, travel sometime in the future and then see if I go to Portugal if I find this again because it was really nice to knit with. I first cast on the Festival Sweater by Petite Knit using this yellow color as the main color and um, I don't know which ball band belonged to that one. One of the colors I have is the 01, which I think would be the white. There's a 09 as well. And then I've lost the other ball bands. Oh well. The lemony yellow I used for the main color. And then I think I used all of these colors for striping. I didn't use this one because I thought it was a bit similar to the yellow. And I made the smallest size of the festival sweater. And I followed the pattern as intended. I think I'd made a tiny mistake. I think I have one more row of yellow between this and this um, bubble stripe than for the other ones. You're supposed to have the same amount of rows for each one. And I think this is a beautiful, clever design. 
it's a round yoke with increases, but you can't see the increases because they are hidden with these rows. So you do the increases and then you do this back and forth um, structured, um, textured thing, <laughs> which looks like tiny bobbles, but it's a really clever way of doing them. It's not like your typical way of doing bubbles. You'd have to get the pattern. It's a paid for pattern if you're interested, but it really was not too much fuzz to knit, I thought. And I also thought that the, the jog in the back is basically invisible. Uh, you can almost see it, but also kind of it's not very visible. So I really like this. I'm going to be making more of this in the future. I might make one for myself. Who knows? But yeah, there was a lot of ends to weave in because there was two ends per color row. You could carry it downwards, but I thought that might be visible, especially with a plant-based fiber. Um, I didn't want to, to do that. So a lot of ends to weave in, uh, both for the body and for, and for the sleeves. Now, um, I was a bit unsure how this would fit her baby. So she's gonna probably have her baby before summer and this is gonna be a summer garment. Um, but I figured that, I don't know, I wasn't sure if this would be the best fit, so I did cast on another one, and then I decided after I'd finished them which one I was going to give. So the other one I cast on in this beautiful baby blue, which is very vibrant, and I did stripes with the pink and the white. And I'll put in a photo or a video so for that one i did only three stripes for the yoke to hide the increases and then i decided to just knit the body plain less ends to weave in so i could finish it in time and instead of doing long sleeves i did a t-shirt version and i did a little bit of modifications besides those modifications i did the neckline for the second size so that it would be bigger and easier to get on and off the head because you never know some babies have bigger heads than other ones so I did the second one size for the neckline then I did the stitch count for the first size uh, because this yarn is very stretchy so it's that way I thought it was gonna fit the baby from early on and for several months hopefully um, and with the t-shirts, you know, they usually grow in length before width. So with the t-shirt, it's going to fit the arm length longer. And then the body, I also did uh, the length of the second size plus a centimeter maybe. So that in the beginning, it's going to be maybe a bit long, but then she can grow with it. I'm hoping. I don't know. So I did those little modifications to make sure that no matter what size the baby is born as, hopefully she can get some use out of um, that t-shirt during the summer. And then this one is being tucked away for future gift for someone. Or maybe I'll just keep it because it's so cute. <laughs> Another uh, thing that I have finished that I talked about in... Um, the enhanced stash enhancement video that I just had. I bought a little kit when I was in France, which is the Rattle Bear, which I bought at the um, Little Weasel in Paris. And I cast this crochet project on an afternoon and I finished it that evening. So it was quite quick. I don't enjoy the process as much as knitting. I find it a bit fiddly, but it's so cute. So now that I have made it once, I know how to make it again. Uh, I did think that the kit would have a bit more explanations as to how to do the different crochet techniques. It doesn't. So you, I had to uh, go on YouTube and Google to, to 
to learn how to do this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a nice quick little project. This one is also going to be tucked away for future um, gifts. There's a lot of people around me having children right now and having to like make something when it's getting close to them having the kid is a bit more stressful. So I'm, I'm hoping to kind of motivate myself to slowly make little things the same way I'm slowly making socks for Christmas gifts and presents, kind of making it throughout the year, tucking it away and being ready for a little gifts give. Um, yes. And I did cast on just the beginnings of a third one. I never got around to it. I don't have enough to make um, even the smallest size in one color with stripes, but I could uh, I could alternate. So let's say I do white and then pink and then blue. you know, I could I could stripe these sections as well. And that way it's a super scrappy project. So that, that is an option and it would be quite invisible, I think. So yes, that is maybe something for the future. For now, I think I'm gonna save these needles because I might be wanting to cast on some new things after this episode because I have gotten quite a lot done on several projects. I finished some things. I currently only have two sweaters as whips and one t-shirt and then blankets don't count, socks don't count. So I don't have that much on my needles, right? So I can cast on new things and I want to cast on new things and I'm going to cast on new things. So there you go. Yes. Okay. So that is two, three finished baby whips. I'm gonna just tuck my yarn into this bag. I've gotta be nice and proper and tidy up after myself. That's because that's what we do now. Organized. And then proceed to throw things away. So those were all my finished objects. I have almost a finished whip. So I've been working on socks, as I said, uh, slowly, slowly making, uh, hoping to have some gifts ready. This is a top down sock that doesn't have a heel yet. I have done the toe. Uh, it's 60 stitches for this leggy thingy tube. For the cuff, there's 72 stitches and I made it quite long in two by two rib, thinking that this might be a cool sort of fold, fold down cuff for a sock, maybe. And then it needs a heel, of course. This size is not a size that would be like super tight on me. So it could fit uh, a woman's foot with for like a um, little bit looser sock, not super loose. I think also it could fit my brothers if I were to do a, a bigger heel. So knit for quite a few rounds before doing the decreases to make more room for the instep heel portion. So I finished one and I've almost finished the other one. I just need to do the toe and then there's just the heels left. The yarn that I've used for this is the Easy Sock by Isayer that I bought in December. And it's not superwash, it's easy wash. So it's somewhere between being non superwash and superwash. Um, so I think it's it would be a good gift list right here. I also do really like the, the colors though so I often also keep the socks that I make because I love wearing knitted socks um, but yeah I have just the toe left so I need to get these on some magic loop because I've been knitting it on like 11 to 12 inch circulars in the round 
but for the toe I do need to do magic loop as well as for the heel so I'm gonna find the right needle size and get the the new color the white color on which somehow feels softer than the the dyed rust color I don't know why that is but it feels softer and then I will have almost the ready gifts um, I have several now I think I have I have this pair I have a yellow pair and then I have a tube in white yarn which are all kind of ready to to add um, toes heels and cuffs so they're like almost ready gifts they just need an evening to be finished and then there's a gift ready so I don't know if I'm gonna cut the heel in now or if I will just save it for later but I will attach the needles and do the toe so at least um, it's just the heels left on these ones which is nice uh, yes I need coffee I just came home from work exercised did a bit of cleaning showered podcasting now and then back to work tomorrow morning no bank holiday for me mm. what you want to see next I mean I guess you don't really have a say because I'm talking to myself but I'm I'm kind of thinking of you and then you know when I'm reading through the comments after posting uh, I feel like there's a little bit of conversation going on <laughs> I have done quite a bit on my Olympic sweater from 1994, the Lilyhammer Olympic sweater, and I'm just going to show you. And it's a mess when it comes to the yarn, it's a big tangled mess, so I'm just going to try and not have knots on everything. So, uh, you've seen this before and I will soon show you again. It's all over color work. I'm using Cascade 220, the non-superwash. Um, oh no, I made a mess. Why? Yeah. Why is this even... Like, break the yarn to make my life easier hopefully what what is this hmm. nope this is what happens when i try to grab a color work project off my couch and then the balls go running and i'm trying to grab it all with one hand and it's huge and I can't and silly me like this isn't the end of the world but this is bad podcasting material <laughs> oh well it's real life it's real life you can skip ahead if you don't want to see my tangled mess but I'm not gonna sacrifice all this work and have lots of new ends to weave in because there is enough as as it is already okay so what we've all been working on working on waiting for ta-da it's too big to even show in frame so this is the body of the olympic sweater which is knit bottom up and there's a lot of work going into this a lot of color work and i am currently on the last portion of the sweater which to my surprise is knit back and forth so you're going to be sticking or i am going to be sticking for the armholes which is on the side somewhere here yeah so I'm gonna be sewing down here and then cutting on each side, but the neckline is knit back and forth, and I'm gonna be picking up stitches to do the neckline. The sleeves are done. The body is almost done. This is the last chart with the color work, which is the same chart 
which is it this one? No, it's not this one. It's the same chart as this one on the sleeves. So the sleeves are done. They've been done for several weeks. Here we go, the sleeves. And this section right here is the same on the top of the, the yoke or sweater, body thingy. But it's knit back and forth. So um, I think the gauge and everything is turning out okay. Even though I'm purling, um, I carry my yarn the same way as when I'm knitting knit stitches. So I have the yarns on my left index finger, one on each side of the knuckle, if you will. And I hope to record um, a little tutorial for how I do this one day. <laughs> it doesn't work super well when you have to catch floats, but in this chart I don't have to catch floats. The longest um, repeat of one color is three stitches, so I don't have to catch floats. I just need to make sure that the yarn is on the inside and not carried on the outside. So what I do is I go behind both strands of yarn and then I pick the stitch and do the purl and then I go back underneath both strands of yarn and then it carries the yarn towards me on the purl side. I know it's, it's really hard I, to, to explain how I do it, so I'm gonna try and do a tutorial sometime when I have the right setup for doing tutorials. Uh, but yes, it's going along quite nicely. I think for this chart right here, so these big um, complex color work charts, I, it took me three full days of knitting. So by that, I mean days off from work where from the morning until the evening, I have all the time to just knit. It took me three of those to do the chart right here because it's not intuitive at all um, every row is different and all three charts are different so you know you have to look at the chart all the way throughout and then for the back it's the same <laughs> so you have to do it twice for one round there's a lot going on in these patterns so this to me looks like someone riding either a horse or a unicorn. <laughs> this is a Selber Rose. This is a Selber Rose. Um, this looks like a bell. This kind of looks like two birds and they are also here looking like two birds. This looks like a king or something riding a horse. I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. This kind of reminded me of acorns. Now that I'm looking at it all together, I don't know if it reminds me of that anymore, but at the time, that's what it reminded me of. And yeah, I am I really like how the fabric feels. It's very um, squishy and thick. So this is definitely gonna be like an outdoors sweater kind of thing. I really like the yarn. Um, I am hoping it's not gonna peel too much because it is, a tight gauge and all the color work wrapping around each other. I think that's going to help hold the fiber in place. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of this sweater. Uh, I've always really wanted it. This is a part of my dream, dream knit cow that I'm running all year, you know, casting on and making something that you've really wanted to make, but for some reason just haven't gotten around to. And this is definitely my ultimate dream knit. Um, I've wanted it for years. I've just been, I don't know, scared to cast it on because it looks very complex and there's sticking involved. I mean, it was a bit of a hassle to knit this because you had to look at the charts. For this section, you could kind of just go because it repeated itself and it was easy in that way. But it's not like super long floats in big parts of the sweater. It's um, knitting up quite quickly. 
I don't know. I I really like this. It's addicting, <laughs> and I'm I'm happy to have it done. Hopefully the sticking goes well, and hopefully it fits. I think it I think it will. I'm knitting the medium size. Um, Matthias really wants the sweater, um, so I guess maybe we'll share it. It would be really nice to make this again. Like I'm not scared off from this pattern because of this section. Like it was fine. <laughs> um, I kind of want to make another one at some point in pastel colors. I think that would be really cute as well. But yeah, that's my Lily Hammer almost finished, just the top part and sticking and neckline left to do. So maybe next time it'll be done. I mean, it's still snowing here, so I still will have use of it, apparently. And uh, the colors that I've been using are these. So they look quite bright. But the color work and the bright colors are only for small parts of the sweater, so all in all it kind of is muted down. So I am happy that I did go with these colors, which are similar to the original colors in the version 2 of the pattern. It's a free pattern on houseofyarn.no in Norwegian. All the Olympic sweater knits are there. Someone did manage to find a link to an English version, so I will link that below. And hopefully the link will work. And yes, I thought I did bring my cheating book, so I'll see if I've written down the colors. So the gray charcoal is the color 4002, the white is 8505, the green is 2429, the red is 8414, and the yellow is 7827. And I'm using four millimeter needles for, for the color work. Um, yes. That is what it is. I have more weights. I'm gonna drink my medium cold coffee. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. I have, oops, some yarn. I've gotten a few rows in on my little garter whip. Who knows what this is going to be? Is it a shawl? Is it a scarf? Is it a blanket? I don't know. It's taken forever. <laughs> I am using some old lace weight merino superwash yarn from Manos del Uruguay and I'm feeling like the color is Vesuvio, but it might not be. I don't I haven't written it down yet. Bad podcaster, I know. Still on the first ball. This is how much I have left of this one. I have another one. I have two white and I have a yellow, and I haven't decided what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna finish this one and then I'm probably leaning towards doing this color again and then maybe do two white and have like half red, half white and then I can fold it in half like a differently created half and half triangle spread. I don't know, we'll see. But I think the color is beautiful. Um, I'm not into this much of a variation usually for a garment, but for a blanket, um, I think it's it's nice. And the color is, oh, it's really nice and soft. I'm not enjoying knitting on it that much because of the superwash feeling. So if there's any moist to my hands, it's like that uh, kind of um, <laughs> feeling when you're knitting with it. But So that's one of the reasons it's going a little bit slowly, but I do keep this in my purse and take it with me. So if I do have like a little bit of time to knit, this is easy to just knit a few stitches on it because it's just plain garter. And then I do a little eye cord edging by slipping the last two stitches with the yarn held towards me um, on every row. So yes, that is a long-term whip probably. Um, really pretty rusty colors and then 
The last whip that I have to show you is my Cumulus Tea. And it does not look like much. It does not look like I have knitted that much since last time, but I have gotten some rows in. This is slower going than that huge colorwork sweater. Like the rows in colorwork goes a lot faster than knitting back and forth, purling on three millimeter needles um, for some reason. It's just, it's not chocolate chippy. I just kind of want to get it done. I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the stockinette, but I also really want to make sure that the v-neck is as deep as I want it. I have cast on the medium size. In retrospect, probably should have cast on for the extra small or small, and then just kept doing the raglans until it was the medium, and that way I would have had a deeper v-neck. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm still going on strong, <laughs> a week, whatever you would say. Um, it's not where I want it quite yet. I'm using the Viking Garn Bambino in a black. It's the color 403. Oh, sorry. And this is the. 50 grams is 176 meters, so sport weight. They also have a thicker yarn um, in the same kind of base, but this is the one that I'm using. I'm using three millimeter needles and the fabric is beautiful. It feels really nice. I'm thinking of making this long sleeved. An idea came to me to make this into a dress. But I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready for a three millimeter black summer yarn dress. I don't know. I'll have a think about it. First gotta first gotta get the neckline done. I um I have like a reference in a cumulus tea that I've made before. Um uh, and I have not done the I card for the neckline because I like the neckline the way it was. The eye cord would, would kind of um, cinch it in a bit and pull it more up and I didn't want that. I really like the, the deep v-neck, uh, wide v-neck. So I'm using this as a reference to see how much further I need to go before I can join in the round and put the sleeves aside. So yeah. That is a slow whip. Sorry, allergies hitting me hard. Um, but yes, it's probably gonna take a while to finish this one. <sighs> Oops. So that was all of my knitting whips. I do keep my homemade crochet basket by my bed and inside it I have my crochet um, project which is my granny stripe project and I have done a few <laughs> I've done a few rows in this brown um, yarn stories monkey something colorway it's a leftover that I had that I used for my Tegna I think and yeah I'm just slowly working on this project there is no rush as you can see the edging is too tight I might unravel the edging someone said you could do that with crochet I've never done that I might do that uh, just to have it not cinch in as much on the bottom uh, we'll see we'll see but yes, just slowly working on this, using up um, Grand Wheel Minis and other um, superwash scraps that I've had in the past that kind of fit the color scheme. And then, I don't know, we'll see how big this is gonna be in the end. If I'm gonna gift it or if I'm gonna keep it, we'll see. But yes, that just has a little bit of progress done to it. 
and then um, I've done a little bit, a little bit of spinning, and I'm going to show you that. So um, I haven't taken it off the bobbin because, um, or the my e spinner because I do want to um, use more fiber on this bobbin before I take it off. So this is a hundred grams of fiber that I have spun up so far and I am teaching myself to spin and I'm kind of just practicing. I don't know what a long draw or a short draw or pre-drafting or I don't really know those things. So I'm just kind of winging it and gonna see how it goes. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just practicing. And since it's an e-spinner, I don't need to practice paddling. I just need to focus on feeding fiber into this thing and trying to get it somewhat consistent. Um, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going for. I'm just trying to do the same thing or get the same thickness-ish. <laughs> I don't even know. So I've done one and I have two more. And I don't know, this is the Ashford E Spinner 3. That's what I've had this for several years. I just haven't gotten into it because spinning was harder than I thought it was going to be. But I've just been doing like 15 minutes here and there in the past two weeks. And I've finished 100 grams. And it's been a lot more pleasurable than kind of forcing myself to finish a fiber just because I want to see how it goes. So now I'm just taking my time slowly and it's better for me. Um, the yarn, or not the yarn, the fiber that I'm using was an advent swap that I did with Sarah from Day to Day Knits two years ago. She sent me three of these Wool of the Andes, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And this is the color Amber Heather. It's 100 grams. And this is just beautiful. And I really enjoyed spinning with this. Um, I find that it's easier to spin with than the, the fiber that I've tried before. So I really enjoyed it. And uh, I have two left. So I've done one. I have 300 grams total. And I think, you know, I could spin up one, one, and one, and then ply, because I think I'm going to be plying. Um, but I did get myself some extra bobbins so that I can play around a little bit more uh, and perhaps spin several fibers at once. I don't know. Someone said that you should have more than three bobbins if you want to spin. I did manage to ply a yarn with the, diff the other fiber that I spun up, but it was a little bit stressful because I had to ply and then spin more and then ply, I don't know. So now I have six bobbins and I think I'm gonna spin half of this up on the bobbin that already has the first one and then do another one with one and a half and then ply them together and hopefully get to nice hanks of sports to DK. I don't even know how it's gonna look. I don't know, but I'm enjoying it. Doing it slowly and not stressing with it and not trying to make anything in particular, just enjoying the process. And um, if it's not something that I want to knit with, I can weave with it maybe. I think it's going to be nice. So when I ordered the, the three extra bobbins, they also sold some fiber and I'm just trying to practice a little bit before I want to spin with the fiber that I processed myself when I lived um, in a barn when I was doing GP rotations. Um, so that fiber is quite special because I've seen the sheep, I've washed the wool, I've um, taken it through like a drum roll or whatever, drum carter, trying to like prepare it to feed and spin with. I've made Rolex. I don't think it's as nice as fiber that you buy that's really nicely prepped and good to spin with. I think it's gonna be a 
bit more difficult to spin with the fiber that I prepped myself. <laughs> so I want to practice a bit more first and hopefully I can make something usable out of that fiber at some point. So I got, this is, I think a hundred grams of Coriadale sliver in the color licorice. So I have this and I'm just gonna practice with this and if I do weaving I'm inspired I'm inspired by um, the Republic of me she uh, has spun some beautiful shawls and scarves and um, I was thinking that a little bit of black in there you know it's gonna be nice Everyone's been saying that Corydale is the best fiber to learn with and practice with, so I got myself a bit of Corydale. They were sold out in like the really nice natural colors and I didn't want to get like a super bright like um, primary color, so I got the I got the black and I'm thinking that it's gonna be nice to use. It's really nice and soft and warm. So I got this one. And I'm just going to put it on the floor. And then I got 250 grams of Shetland Tops Humbug. Because I thought this was beautiful. Like this is, I think, undyed. It's just the natural colors. And it's so pretty i think this is gonna be such an interesting spin um because you see all these beautiful hand dyed to uh, like fibers this looks like hand dyed but i think it's just the natural colors of it but it's gonna be a really nice variation so this also feels really nice and soft like i can pet it so yeah Hopefully, uh, I will continue my little spinning a little bit here and there, get better, maybe get some usable yarns in the end, um, I'm hoping. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that is my acquisitions of uh, since, since last time and all of the things that I've made. I hope you're well, I hope uh, you're making all the things, join in on the Dream Knit Cal if you like. and. Uh, I will return to you soon, maybe with some new cast-downs, maybe with a finished sweater. We'll see. Bye!